Hi, I'm Bobby C. Today we're going to talk about flat towing a car behind your motorhome. If you like what you see, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. Let's talk about first, do you need to tow? Um, well, that depends. So, there are different types of RVs. You can have a Class B RV, which is basically a, a van type RV. You can have a Class C, which is similar to the one that I have. It's a 24-foot Jacob Melbourne. Class C on a Mercedes Sprinter chassis. Um, you can have a Class A, which range from say 28 feet to 45 feet. So uh, again, it 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 depends. So uh, if you're thinking about buying an RV, um, you know, and considering whether you're going to need to have a tow car or not, I would say, uh, of course, with the Class Bs, the van types, probably not. Uh, with the uh, Class A uh, RVs uh, probably will. Uh, with the Class Cs, though, uh, similar to what I have here, um, that's a maybe. So a lot of people get the Class Cs, especially the smaller ones like I have. It's only 24 feet. Uh, it's not that wide. Uh, you can get it in and out of a lot of places. Uh, so some people that have them don't tow. Many people don't tow. Some people do. So I've done both, so I can give you my experience from that. Um, I would say um, that, you know, there, there are things that you can do and can't do if you don't have a tow car. Uh, it's just a lot more convenient. So some of the, the reasons that it's more convenient, for example, would be once you get to your campsite, you get set up, and you're done. Uh, you don't have to move your RV, you don't have to hook and unhook, uh, re-level, things like that. So from that standpoint, uh, it's very helpful to have a tow car. It makes it much more convenient. If you're buying a Class A RV, you probably ought to factor that into your cost because it's going to be pretty hard to get to do a lot of things when you're at the campground. Uh, it's harder to move those around than, than a smaller RV. So probably something you should consider. Once you decide what you're going to tow, uh, if it's a car, for example, there are different ways to do it. You can put it on a dolly. Uh, that's handy, particularly for cars that, that can't be flat towed like I'm going to talk about. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, or, you know, if it can be flat towed, like I'm going to show you, that's, that's another way to do it. Um, so, again, what do you need? Depends kind of on what you have. If you want to tow the car that you existing car that you have, if you're going to find another car that can be flat towed, uh, depends on those types of things. And wouldn't a red Italian sports car look great towed behind your motorhome? Oh yeah. Not that one. This one. This is what you want. Italian sports car. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. This is a sport model. I love that. It's not a Ferrari. But it ain't bad. Okay, we're taking a nice little ride in the country on a beautiful fall day in the Fiat. And uh, I'm loving it. Going to a state park that's fairly close to me, Moraine State Park, get some, get some views over there. Okay, folks, this is why a car is nice. I'm in a state park close to my home. Um, if I had my RV here, I could maybe get into some spots like this, but there would be a lot of spots that I couldn't. So this is why having a car is really nice if you're doing RVing because you want to see things. So it gives you the opportunity to, to do that. You can uh, get to a place like this in the state park that's close to my home and get to places where you probably couldn't get to with your RV. So, nice to have.
I want to share with you five reasons that the Fiat 500 is a great car for towing behind your motorhome. Stick with me. Number one, these are easy to set up for flat towing. Um, you know, I'll have links uh, below for, uh, there was a YouTube video that you walked you right through removing the front fascia, which is, uh, is actually not all that hard. The hardest thing that I ran into, because I did this in December, was removing this front bra. And I should have used a hair dryer. Would have made things a little bit easier, I think, but I, but I didn't. So, um, but I got, I got it off and I got it back on. But really not difficult at all. Um, I will we'll also have links there for what I ordered from e-trailer and um, you know I ordered the the base plate which goes beneath the front fascia uh, I ordered a tow bar for my motorhome and uh, a wiring kit uh, which uh, you know operates the my a separate set of bulbs um, in my rear turn signals that operate off of the RV. So I didn't have to cut into uh, the Fiat's electrical system, which was, which was, which was great. I also have a link there for um, a, a video that I found on the Fiat USA forum, uh, which has been very helpful to me, but uh, it, it showed a way to uh, run my wires because I had to run from the, the lights that I installed in the uh, rear tail lights up underneath uh, the carpet and uh, underneath my accelerator pedal to get into the engine compartment. And it showed you exactly how to do that. So um, I'll have a link for that for you there too in case you find one and you want to do it. But uh, very easy to set up, um, very, very nice car to tow. Okay, I just wanted to go in for a closer look. Uh, the base plate, as I said, is something that is mounted to your frame. Um, as you can see, we have um, some plugs in here, which come out, They're just to keep the dust out. But in there, I'll show you what fits in when I show you the hookup. This, of course, would be where your safety chain goes. And then down below here is where your four pin uh, connector goes okay with the hood up I just wanted to show you and in the link to the video down below it shows you the total procedure for removing the front faces but there are four I believe there's four on the top and four on the bottom and a couple underneath uh, Torx screws that need to be removed and uh, there are also some um, under some screws under the fender well that need to be removed and the side panels there's a there's a there's a clip okay I also wanted to try to show you in the tail light I don't know if you can see there's a bulb back there it's just a standard bulb it's not an LED uh, that's uh, the bulb from the blue light tail light wiring kit so those bulbs work um, in, in conjunction with my uh, connector on the RV so turn signals brake lights parking lights all that you get from that that ball number two it's small uh, the car is only a little over 2300 pounds um, you know I, I can tow it behind my uh, Jayco Melbourne which is a Mercedes Sprinter based it's only 188 horsepower but it's got plenty of torque and I have no issues going up and down mountains in Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia. Uh, tows it like there's nothing there. Um, the other thing that's that's nice about that is in the, the routes that I travel uh, a separate brake controller which controls the brakes in the car while you're towing it is is not required it's under 3,000 pounds but you know, you want to check regulations in your state. It's, each state is different, so make sure uh, if you need a brake controller. Um, again, that would be easy to do in here. You use the same route that I used under the accelerator pedal for the rear brake lights. So it's small, so it's easy to tell. Number three, it's big. You got a lot of room in this hatch. 
there's actually plenty of room in here. I don't know how well you can see it with the sun, but uh, you know, it's great for me and the wife and the dog and uh, going trips to the grocery store uh, so we don't have to take the motor home. Again, very convenient. Well, how well you can see, but I, I actually have a lot of headroom in here. Uh, this has a sunroof, so that helps. But even with the um, the screen, vent screen closed, uh, plenty of headroom still. So good for big guys. I'm 6'2", so just to give you an idea. Number four, it's a fuel sipper. You're not going to spend much money on gas on this. And who wants to do that when you're on vacation, you're out RVing, you're going to spend enough money, uh, you know, putting fuel in your RV. Why do it for your tow car? Number five, it's fun. It's not a convertible, but you can see with the sunroof, you can get the air through there and, you know, let your hair blow in the wind and whatever. It's fun. You'll enjoy it. All right, I showed you the base plate. This is the um, attachment that goes inside the base plate. It's, it's aluminum. There's a pin and it locks in place. So we put both of those in. I'll come back after we get the other one in. Over to this side. With the tow bar, there is an orientation that these go to and a pin holds it in place. So these release release the arms and there's your pin and this locking pin goes inside has a little nose on it here and the ring needs to be pushed down towards the nose. I'll do the other side. Same thing. Now your tow bar is connected. Of course, you have safety chains that comes with the kit for the tow bar. Mine was the Alpha tow bar. There are other models available. And we're going to connect it right here on both sides, crisscrossing the safety chains and running them underneath the tow bar according to. Blue Ox. Finally, we have our connector for electrical. I bought this coiled connector. It's lighted at night. So it just goes into my seven pin connector on this end with the motorhome. And then down here, it converts it to a four pin ground connector. And we're good to go. So the only thing that we need to do is to pull forward, sort of jerk the RV forward a bit, and one of these arms will lock, and you're good to go. The other one will lock in transit. So this is the Blue Ox flat toe setup. It's the easiest one I found. Nice because these pins come out once you get to your destination, so you know you don't have to worry about driving around with those in there. So. That's the connection for flat towing. This is Fiat 500. Most of these blue walk setups are the same. It's just the base plate that's gonna be different. Well, I think you realize that uh, I, I really like my Fiat 500 Sport. It's been a great car for me. Might not be the best option for you, so what are some options? Well, you can tow just about any vehicle with a dolly. Uh, all you need is the dolly and some magnetic tow lights to put on your, on your tow car just not quite as convenient as flat towing, but certainly gives you a variety of choices. Um, if you decided that you want the flat tow, go to Motorhome Magazine, uh, and they have an annual dinghy guide. A dinghy is a motorhome tow vehicle. So they have this annual dinghy guide that shows you which vehicles can be towed and what's required. So it gives you a whole list of things to look at there. So. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, um, and hope to see you next time.